crowd of La Source, they come. Speed builds up towards the lights. The flags are ready, the lights will change. The race gets underway now. Great start by the Porsche of Gus Backler. Then as they dive downhill for the first time, the green Dynamic Motorsport Porsche takes over the lead as they sweep their way through a rouge, ready to make the climb uphill. Lap one of 24 hours of racing. Everybody so far, so good as they make the climb up through Radion, heading towards the Corn. It is Porsche ahead of Mercedes, but on his toes there, looking the number 95 Aston Martin trying to dive up on the inside line. Nicky team, Backlet leads, Marcello leads Bortolotti as they get to the first timing point up towards Le Coma. Just look how busy the racetrack is. I mean, that is an absolute traffic jam as they come into Le Coma, then the drop back down through Malmody, the run down to Brussel. Everybody apparently behaving extremely well. We do think, well, kicking up dust on the exit of Malmody, but that's not an issue. But back, the cars almost four abreast coming down the Canal Street. On the outside line there, you saw number 32 Audi, Kelvin van der Linde, but it's Backler leading, still trying to get the tyres warmer, isn't he, as he jinks left and right, coming down the hill out of Speaker's corner, the Jackie Eakes corner. This is Pouin, Porsche, Mercedes, Lamborghini, then Mercedes, then Audi in fifth place as they come streaming through, an effort made on the inside by Benjamin Goethe there in the Gulf delivery, Rothko Audi. There is number 50, the BMW junior team, entering Neil Verhagen at the wheel of it. And there's our first really wide run, that was the Joe to McLaren, I think. McLaren, indeed, yes. Way out wide it goes, and now you've got number 77, Lamborghini of Sandy Mitchell from the Gold Cup, also trying to wriggle through on the inside. So, out of the pith path they come. And despite the fact that the circuit is very, very busy, you've had a couple of cars running wide, but it's not been quite the drama fest that one or two people feared. Out of the curb, Paul Frere. So, the leading car, that of Klaus Backler, trying now to edge away as the field comes towards the end of the opening lap, not the necessarily full lap, but it's where the timing point is going to be, and there, Further down the order, more side-by-side side battles rage on. All of these cars, remember, to the same specification. They're all GT3 across the different classes of Pro, Silver, Gold and Pro-Am. Up towards the timing line, we've also got this round of the European Fanatec GT World counting for the Intercontinental GT Challenge powered by Pirelli. So for some, there are bags full of points on offer across the two championships. So the field then now streams uphill for the first... Uh, time if you like from a, a proper flying racing lap three wide in the mid pack as if your Perez compact in the Mercedes with lots of grubs in a straight line streams around the outside also here the Sky Tempest are racing Mercedes out of the hat racing team stable tries to gain places Loris Spinelli at the wheel of it he races these cars in America with the Lacratine he goes through there gets his elbows out a little bit to get ahead of Nicholas Bart in the red Audi that was a good part that's a puncture for Sandy Mitchell isn't it yes it is left rear has gone down got half the racetrack to travel run. He needs to, again to be careful. He doesn't want to run back too quickly because of that tyre. Drama at Spa because the Audi with a puncture limps towards us. That looks to me to be Ricardo Feller's car. And that's the second punctured tyre in quick succession for a car. We've had one Lamborghini now. We've had an Audi. It's a different side, though. It was the left rear, now it's the right rear. There's another car slow there coming into the chicane. They all went charging past it, but I just wonder if somebody else has got a drama. Well, it's it is. Lamborghini. It's, it's Bortolotti, isn't it, with a puncture? It is! Mirko Bortolotti then, almost within sight of the pit lane, has had a tyre go down so he can limp in quickly. That's lucky. You don't often get luck like that, if you can call it luck. But Bortolotti with a puncture. It's another Audi now, the left rear. That's Hassa. That's Christopher Hassa. And he was, of course, up in that leading four. That's the fourth place car in strife. Here we go. Here's the overtake. So Lula Gara goes one way and Lucas Stoltz makes the undercut. This is the key. Get yourself positioned. Gets up alongside the Porsche. Gets the better drive. Now down the hill. Who's going to be brave? Wow. Not an awful lot of pick and choose, but the fractional advantage towards Lucas Stoltz. And there was a little bit of contact. Come the other guy. Oh, I don't like any of that. I think, I think that was the fault of Lucas Stoltz. I think Come the other guy got himself a little bit too far wide. He could have backed out of that. He didn't need to go as wide. Into the hairpin. Turn through the corner, there's the Porsche, stays ahead, but only just. Yeah, but again, the momentum has gone towards Mercedes. This time it's a little bit of a more even match as they run down the hill, but look at the pace that Ravelli Marcello has. He's going to take that second position away from Kubel Edegaard. Actually, Edegaard needs just to settle down, calm down. He was forced to run very, very hard, having not driven this car since last night. Now he's trying to come back on Marcello, gets a better run onto Camel Street, but Marcello's on the inside as they come up the hill. It's going to be nipped out. Oh, oh, very, very aggressive from Nadegar, but Marcello holds his ground. Nadegar's got to back on. Oh, wow, what's happened to this? That's a big impact, and uh, that's the Nicholas Bart Gilles Magnus Audi, which I think he says Argazzo now at the wheel of it. 
it is, and Cesar Gazzo has gone off the road, presumably coming out of Blanchiment. He's done damage to the front of the car. Uh, he's got the Santa Dot Junior team Audi, in, or what's left of it, into the pit lane. Damage, sizable damage on the left front, and here he goes. And arrives he's sideways. Goes. Yeah, it was Blanchiment. Wait for the bang. Yes, indeed. Oh, that's a heavy impact on the left front. And uh, the bodywork, apart from anything else, being shredded. Yellow flag sector two, so we've got a car off the road. And as there, look, Thomas Priming gets up the inside of the Falcon Horse BMW. Oh. That's the reason. Off the road, that looks like Elise de Pau to me. It is. Elise de Pau is off at the exit of Le Corn. So big, big drama. Porsches are together. We might be getting another interruption if that can't drive out of the gravel. Well, you need to give it a, a moment, see whether it is able to recover itself. And the look at this battle coming up the hill. Richard Leach gets alongside the Mercedes. But this is the sister car or the green car running directly. Oh. But there's the, the, the making a limping its way back. Yeah. But well, Thomas Preening find a way around. Richard Leach has got all intent as they come up to the chicane. That was Antares Al limping back. Yellow flag still out at the top of Lake Corp. Leitz comes under attack from Priming then as they come down towards the chicane. And great racing, we're enjoying it. Another one is in the gravel. 27 Lamborghini, that is easy to Tumlu Lopez, who's gone off the road. Surely we're going to have to have another safety car. There's a damaged Ferrari smoke billowing out of the back of it. High drama here at Spa. There are cars off the road, cars with problems. It is all kicking off here in Belgium. Quite a lot to try and catch up on. So we have one at the top of Lake Corp. That having been pulled out of the gravel, having another off was 57. That was the car that Jens Liebhauser triggered the first safety car uh, for. And then this was Isaac Tutumlu Lopez with a bit of help from the Iron Dames Ferrari. Ooh, I would it was, wasn't it? Going into the gravel, yeah. Replay here of more drama up towards Les Combes and poor L57 <laughs> yet again gets turned around, oh, oh, and then gets collected, blimey, when it's not your day, it is not your day. Now there, over the line, is the Nicholas Nielsen Ferrari battling with 47 Porsche, so Dennis Olsen at the wheel of it, the former Intercontinental GT Challenge champion, fights with number 51 as they drop down the hill, 47 then now is going for 16th place, they're toe-to-toe -to -toe down at the bottom of the hill, Nicholas Nielsen on the inside, on the outside though, Dennis Olsen gets squeezed, oh there's contact between the two, thankfully the Ferrari didn't come off worse out of all of that. Oh, trouble. Big trouble. Ooh, someone very moved on the shorter big car. Big it started life as a Lamborghini. It's, it's the now, 63 car. Oh, it's dear. now this a Borghini. Is, it is indeed. This is the car that's had all sorts of problems, and unfortunately, that is a full left hand, uh, sorry, front right, right so. corner has been yeah. given a massive bash. The front right wheel is hanging off at a, right, a, a so rather over jaunty angle. What, what happened? has he what tagged? did it hit? Now he comes into sight up the hill. Now, has he just gone off or has he clipped it on somebody in trouble? And that's a big clip. If he's hit somebody and done that amount of damage, there's another very damaged car out there. I could talk about the front end of the car, but there's not that much to talk about. The front right-hand corner has gone completely. The front right-hand wheel is um, back at about 40 degrees off true. Do we have more here? Oh, is this down at campus? Well, I don't know. The first time we saw it was coming through the exit out of the path, On the dirt and just gets... I mean, it, yeah, it just gets sucked out into that. Again, there's a gravel trap there on the exit of path. Gets sucked out into about. I haven't seen anybody go off in that barrier in years. What do we see here? Coming up towards out of Blanchimont. Spin, oh. tagged from behind. And that was a firm impact with the barriers. He was tagged from behind, I think. Ah, 71. Um, that's the white... No, not 71, 71 51. 51. No, it's 51. The, that was the white Ferrari. OK, the Iron Lynx white Ferrari yeah. that's for James Collado running in sixth place. So he uh, pointed the finger that way, so no wonder the, the, the yeah. power was cut, because uh, when you clip from behind, of course, the car is pretty unbalanced when you're coming out of Blanchemont, but more than that, it's a very, very high speed indeed. Full course yellow, 10 seconds. Well, full oh. course yellow, oh, right, in the first part of the lap, full so course yellow. Well, Who's at the moment? It looks like some lights are missing off the top. Full course yellow now. OK, that's a very quick flick to full yeah. course yellow, so that, hold on, I've got it right on the chart, that's full course. The Bentley is oh, stranded at the well. side of the circuit, the 107 in the hands of Antonin Borger. He had a problem with the car earlier, but... Uh, that's their race all over, isn't it? I mean, it's not all over, but that is their race all over.
the race director has brought out the red flags. Cars have returned to the pit lane, so the circuit has fallen quiet. And we will now wait for, hopefully, the resumption of proceedings. Yeah, the safety car pulls off into yeah. the pit lane and nicely controlled restart from Nick Yellowly yeah. with Dan Harper in behind. So BMW fans, cheer right now. Your cars are first and second. Half a second between them as they head over the finish line up to La Source, it's 98 ahead of 50 as it should be, and in behind, very close behind, Philippe Nasa. he's shaping up to try and make a move, maybe somewhere like Le Comte, but he's getting the drag down the hill behind Dan Harper. That and was where the moves they go. It is currently uh, 6 a.m., 10 hours and 45 minutes, just a fraction under. It is Augusto Farfus that leads the race from Jules Gounon, both previous winners, with Nico Verhagen in third place in the number 50 Rover Racing BMW. Oh dear, oh. That, is the, that is the 32, I said their races wow. have been rotten, but Charles Vier, it's a Belgian driver desperate to win his home race for okay. Audi Sport Team WRT. They already had Not all the other sorts car. of problems. Is that both cars involved? That's the 46 car, the car that's uh, being driven by Valentino Rossi. Now, not with the middle, course, that's Nico 10 Muller. seconds. Oh. Okay, but. Nico Muller was a lap down and Charles was one position ahead of him. They were separated at the start of the last lap. Full it was yellow now. Oh. Left Muller front and right rear damage on two cars. I, I, I know they're both WRT cars, but is that the end of WRT's race? I think it is. Look, chairs being packed away, hoping the car will come back. 32, that's not going anywhere. That's got a broken right rear corner, probably only has one wheel drive. But the other car, the 46 car, will be coming in. So now, clear all the guests and the visitors out of the garage, because this is where it's going to get real. We will go full course yellow. We will go safety car, because I think this might take more than a moment or two to get out the way. I don't think this is going to be a long problem. There's the brakes, and there is... Well, there's the work going on at the front. That's the 98 car. They've done their technical change. 50 has... We're back, racing under green flag, and it is Davide Rigon who leads... By, by three tenths of a second, Nick Tandy yeah. is right under his rear wing and catching the pair of them is Augusto Favos, so he's about two and a half seconds further back, but he is has just set the fastest first sector of anyone, that number yeah. 98 BMW coming right back to his ultimate form, but Nick Tandy's got the flavour. This is the car that started 66th, i.e. Yeah. stone last on the grid. A brilliant opening stint from Nick Tandy, gave him here 40-something positions as he worked his way up the order, but right now this is a driver who's one here before and he's going for a massive massive charge to see if he can take the lead off David A. Rico. Tandy absolutely full of vim and vigor and determined to have a, a really big race here and it is entirely possible as he lunges to the inside of David A. Rigon as they go into La Source does he get the drive on the exit no, yes he does he has the lead well that was a brilliant brilliant wow. move because uh, David A. Rigon right at the top of his game but uh, the, the hunt was on and now Let's see how much Nick Tandy could pull clear of Davide Rigon and how soon Augusto Farfus can depose those back markers and yeah. get on to the tail of that yellow Ferrari. It was leading, it's now back into second place. Still two cars between Farfus and his next target. But Davide Rigon was the leader, he is no longer. Nick Tandy pulling further back. Uh, he is on board view with Davide Rigon. The replay of the pass, he's in the middle of the road doesn't really move to the racing line, trying to guard the inside and the outside. Aha, uh -huh. Nick Tandy having none of that. Lick the stamp, full set. We've had 95, Marco Sorensen in them. Uh, at the end of that, 371. And right now, Yellowly is committed to trying to make a move as they head up the hill. He goes to the outside, and this time he's done it. He's finally cleared the Porsche. He's gone through into third place, although Jaminet fancied his chances of coming back in him there, didn't he? Now, is Andrea Bertolini catching? Yes, he is, because he's set the fastest lap. And so this is going to be, we saw the 188 inherit the lead of this class, but now, with a part ahead now, McLaren losing ground here, and it is very much nose to tail for the lead in Pro-Am. Yeah, and this is the car that set the fastest race lap, not on the hands of Andrea Bertolini, but Eliseo oh. Rivera, and up the inside. So the pass has been executed by Andrea Bertolini, and he is now ahead of the McLaren. Oh, is this going to be a contact between two cars? It is. Oof. It is the Mercedes tags. 
the rear of the McLaren and it turns sharp right and well you can see look at the bodywork shredded and of course remember McLaren let's look at from this head-on view there he goes and he hits that that's a big big impact but remember the McLaren has got what they call a monocell it's a full carbon fiber chassis it's I think the only GT car apparently competing. Porsche has got up and passed the Mercedes. This is how it happened because oh, there's no. contact and Gunnar got tagged by the Sky Tempest of Mercedes and that's how Vantor has got through on the inside. Honestly, this Mercedes has had all sorts of dramas in the race and now it's affected what's going on for the lead just a tiny tiny. It was trying to get to the pit lane but it was on the wrong side of the road, wasn't it? That behind the wheel this time, Jonathan Hui. Clumsy. So, Steins Kotthorst leads Davide Rigon, and that gap has actually been going out between the two. Nicky Team, though, is lapping on the same sort of pace as Steins Kotthorst. Now, you know, if we're saying that Stein is not the quickest of the three, but Nicky Team's lap times are comparable to him, then that's a thumbs up to Steins Kotthorst. And also, he is about to be replaced in that car by Davide Rigon. Here's the move. Jules Gounon comes up alongside Lawrence Vanthor then for fourth on the road. They go side by side down towards Eau Rouge, then the Mercedes on the inside for the first bit, and the move is done. Through he goes. Great pass. Jules Gounon gets ahead of Lawrence Vanthor, and not only that, he's about three lengths clear by the top of the hill. Is he going to do? Oh, he, he had a half a look about him, but the Aston covered it. Oh, and oh, oh, oh. the team gets wide now. This is a chance for Gounon. Better drive off the chicane. Are they going to come side by side? Gugno has done enough, I think. He'll be on the outside of the road coming into the corner, but Nicky Team's going to stick the Aston Martin down the inside and deny. Side by side out of the corner. Now, let's see who's got more grunt down the hill. Nicky Team comes out ahead. Jules Gounon stands his ground on the outside line. He's going to have the inside for the first part of our rouge, the outside for the second part. He's got his nose in front down the hill. Here comes Nicky Team. Mercedes ahead. They touch the Aston Martin spins. Off the road goes Gounon. Around goes Team. He avoids anything solid so far. He spins. He's in the middle of the road. He's off the road. Jules Gounon keeps going. Nicky Team, after a monster, monster spin, gets going again. That was a proper code brown moment. He's got going. He's avoided hitting anything or being hit by anybody. But he had four tyres that'll be like threepenny bits. They'll be flat spotted so bad he's slowing down. Now, has he got a serious problem or not? Or is that simply the vibration from those four he's wheels got a and puncture, tires? Has he? he may have actually, in that spin, he might have actually, you know, you'd see the rubbish falling off it. So when he was spinning, he's probably gone through the carcass of the tyre. Yeah. We've seen that happen earlier this year. A tyre, there was actually a hole in it where a car had spun and had spun through the carcass, through the cords, and the tyre just, did, uh, wow, what an exciting Oof. moment that was. Especially if you're a Nicky team. Yellowly again, just getting himself aligned behind the Ferrari. He was able to carry all his speed through and it sweeps up alongside. Now he's got two cars directly ahead of him. And he wants to put himself ahead of the yellow Ferrari, which he succeeded in doing. Gets past Mad Panda. And, uh, well, that's also helped Sarah as well because he was able to use what Yellow Lee was doing to enable him to get past the Mercedes. Oh, a oh, problem the 98. Is that a puncture? Oh, Real left puncture, I think. What has happened to the BM? Is it left or right? It's the right oh, it's rear. Right. It's the right rear. So Nick Yellow Lee, now, was that part of the reason why he was losing time to Jules Gugno? Or was there a contact? Looks like it's gone down already. The, the, the right rear looks like it's definitely gone. It has definitely gone. It's actually come away from the rim. That was the smoke was where the tire the bead between the tire and the rim broke and that's why it got sideways but the tire was clearly delamined and losing air or losing pressure and only when he turned into Pujol did he realize oh I've got a problem so you're riding now with Raffaele Marcello who will take this car to the end and that is Luca Stoltz ahead of him so this is a battle now for position it's for second on the road it will become the race lead when Engel makes his pit stop and Jules Gounon's car, Raffaele Marcel at the wheel of it, is lining up to make a move for leadership. Here they come. Side by side over the line, down towards La Source they go. On the outside line is Marcello, on the inside line is Stoltz, and Lucas Stoltz Ooh. gives him a bit of a hip and shoulder and forces him over the car. Oh, I think the steward might have a little look at that because that was clearly, clearly uh, not giving a driver, uh, that was not a fair, I mean, I would understand why, I would probably have done the same thing, <laughs> but of course, in the case of Raffaele Marcello, he didn't want to get off the throttle, but, you know, Marcello had the, the 
the advantage coming off the chicane, but Stoltz had the right line into the corner. And here you can see just he releases the steering and forces Marcello, and that is, I would say, within the family, that's not going to be looked at positively. There we go under break, so what is going to happen here? Is Marcello going to do much the same? He's not as close as he was the previous time, but he's got that fresher rubber, he's got better traction off the corner. Will Lucas Stoltz be as kind or not? Well, he's on the inside this time. I think it's a done deal. He's on the inside. And yes, so the boys had their fun and the message has come through. Stop playing. Yeah, I, I agree. I think somebody's had a word with Lucas Stoltz saying, right, that was uh, a bit out of order. Well, he tried to come out of the slipstream and realised he was going into a brick wall. So he pulled back into the slip, oh, again, the back end of the Porsche. I mean, we heard Nick talking about the Porsche oversteering. No, no, clear as clear as gin. Fulco could see the back of the car is not stable, and he's got a much, much better balanced car. Made it through, and I mean, that was an ultimately a very straightforward and easy overtake for the young Italian. In comes Raffaele Marcello for the last time, so this has got to go like clockwork. Right, so the fuel goes in. The tyres are on, Marcello is on board, he stays on board. It's now up to the team to make sure this pit stop does not contravene any regulations as soon as possible. It will be dropped down, engine fires, away goes Raffaele Marcello then back into the final 37 minutes of the Total Energy's 24 hours of spa. I think this lap is when Mario Engel should come in and in he does come. Indeed, he didn't really have a lot of options so Maro Angle, uh, and it's just, you know, it's inevitably there's going to be winners and losers, and in the case of the 55, they've done a stellar, a stellar job, but this, the strategy means that they've got to make that final pit stop with 21 minutes remaining. It'll be a quick stop, but, well, they're going to change tyres as well, so it's going to be the, the, the traditional stop. Now, is Engel staying in? I think he is. They opened the door, but I think it might be just a change of drinks bottle as race leader comes up. And he will, oh, sorry, race leader, he will become race leader any second now as he comes across the start finish line. There was the former race leader. Up front, Marcello is now the race leader, confirmed, because he's just gone across the timing line. And then behind him in second place will be, a bit distant now, Luca Stoltz. Oh, a little bit of squirrely. That's the position, isn't it? That is that Engel, is. dive bombing Dan Harper, he's gone through. So Mutro Engel is up into fourth place then as they come across the line, but BRDC superstar Dan Harper fights back on the outside line and they rub and they rub again. Touring car style down towards La Source. Engel's ahead, but can Harper dive bomb him on the way out of the corner? Well, Engel's got fresher tyres, so he's out, got that additional bite and grip. And Dan Harper went two to two all the way up into La Source but the speed of the Mercedes AMG at this point. It's going to be one more corner to go as down towards the chicane comes Raffaele Marcello. They're smiling in the garage. They're going to be cheering in the garage in a moment because the 2022 Total Energy's 24 hours of Spa is won by Mercedes AMG. It is won by Raffaele Marcello, Danny Juncadere and Jules Gounon. Raffaele Marcello brings the car across the line. The outpouring of emotion is plain to see. The only man that can't join in just yet is Rafael Di Marcello. Well, let's have a look at the result now that we've seen the reaction as the Mercedes AMG GT3s take a 1 2 from the Akonis ASP and Team Get Speed. A win for Rafael Di Marcello, Danny Juncadea, and Jules Gounon from Lucas Stoltz, Stein Scotthorst and Maxi Goetz with Antonio Ferroco, Daniel Serra, and David Rigon taking third. Uh, Great effort to be 13th for winning silvers. Jean-Baptiste Simonau, Benji Goethe, and a very emotional Thomas Neubauer with Maria Sug, Yusuf Bohaka, Nicholas Scherl, and Alex Arca finishing second in the Silver Cup. They were 15th overall. The winning Gold Cup car, 18th overall, the Iron Dames Ferrari of Rahul Frey, Dorian Pam, Sarah Bovi, and Michelle Gatting from number 33, Audi, of Ulysse de Pau, Maxime and Arnold Robin and Ruggiero Tomita third in the class being the Sky Tempesta, Mercedes, Jonathan Hui, Laurie Spinelli, Chris Froggett and Eddie Chiva. The winning Pro-Am 20th, Stefano Costantini with Louis Machiels, Andrea Bertolini and Alessio Rovera. Jules Gounon, Danny Juncadea and Raffaele Marcello, the winners of the 24 Hours of Spa.